yes, there I am, father of a Sweetbriar student. And there you see me loading up the car to take Mary Lou back to college. It's a familiar task, and every Sweetbriar father will agree that it's a job we long remember. There are also memories of the trip into the Blue Ridge region of Virginia, the Old Dominion, the state that has played such an important role in our nation's history. Well, we made it, all safe and sound. Again, we're back at Sweetbriar College. From the moment a person first drives into the campus, he realizes that this is certainly one of the most beautiful centers of collegiate life and serious learning anywhere in America. As we look down on Sweetbriar from Monument Hill, we can see acres and acres of Virginia farmland and scenic hillside, all part of the original bequest, whereby the Reverend and Mrs. James Henry Williams provided funds and the lands and buildings of Sweetbriar Plantation to establish a college in memory of their daughter, Daisy Williams. And as a result, the college was opened almost 50 years ago. It is a place of quiet charm, rich in the basic, simple ways of life that make America strong. But it is not a retreat, nor is it an ivory tower sort of place nor is it a country club. It's in step with the times. Young women from all America and from several foreign countries come here to be trained as citizens, wives, homemakers, professional women, modern women, able to think straight, to make wise decisions, to play their roles in a world that needs people trained to solve problems, and often to solve them with a woman's touch. That's it the spirit of 56 in the minds and hearts of Sweetbriar women everywhere. 1956, the year of the golden anniversary of Sweetbriar College. For almost 50 years now, these picturesque buildings have echoed the voices and have held the dreams of generation after generation of students. Through two world wars, through depressions and times of prosperity, Students have found at Sweetbriar a solid and distinctive experience through a liberal arts education. And thus, the spirit of 56 is their spirit, a spirit of real achievement and high standards that now looks ahead, that evaluates, that plans for another half century of education for women here in the Blue Virginia Hills. We who know Sweetbriar College know it as a place for serious study, a small, friendly community where students, faculty, and staff live and work and learn, building and maintaining an educational program where every student is important, where people really know each other, where people help each other. In the sciences, our Sweetbriar students have the benefit of the careful guidance and personal help of their professors. Students are here testing the way certain chemicals conduct electricity. In science and in all fields of instruction, high academic standards are maintained. To guarantee these standards, Sweetbriar College must soon build a new, adequate, properly designed science building to replace present laboratories and science classrooms that have served well, but which now are not adapted to or adequate for Sweetbriar's modern program of science education for women. For the work in botany, Sweetbriar's entire campus, with its hundreds of varieties of trees, shrubs, and flowers, provides the specimens needed for descriptive study and analytical work. As in thousands of small American towns and communities, a trip to the post office is an important event on everybody's daily schedule. The mail comes in from families east, west, north, and south, from fathers and mothers everywhere, who are also definitely a part of this spirit of 56. The snack bar of Boxwood Inn is a popular place between classes for refreshments and small talk. The bookshop on campus, where students go for supplies needed for study. Without the faculty, Sweetbriar wouldn't be Sweetbriar. The people who, with loyalty and devotion, 
have given so much of themselves year after year. Ours is an independent institution. Sweetbriar College stands with other private colleges as a bulwark of American freedom in the field of higher education. Brushing up on those last minute notes, where do you suppose she's headed? For a class with Miss Robinson, Miss Weaver, Mr. Fisher, or perhaps Miss Fraser? Located in Virginia near many of our nation's most important historic shrines, Sweetbriar has always recognized the lessons which history has to teach. The heritage of events and people who can help us today to solve the new problems of an atomic age. The gymnasium now must house not only the physical education classes, but also work in music, speech, and other departments. As in the case of science, Sweetbriar's increased program in music and art now deserves additional space and equipment to serve those important departments in a woman's college. There is a close cooperation here between teacher and student. As a result, learning becomes a matter of teamwork as well as self-competition with results of which everyone can be proud. With many classes conducted entirely in French, the teaching emphasis is upon the spoken language and not just reading ability. Students hear pure French from their fellow student who has come to Sweetbriar from France. Sweetbriar is known for its emphasis upon well-planned projects designed to bring about international understanding and goodwill. For example, the student exchange programs. Young Americans in Paris. Students from Sweetbriar and from other American colleges study together by means of the junior year in France program administered by Sweetbriar College. At St. Andrews University in Scotland, there is another blending of intellectual life, the new world and the old world. Two Sweetbriar students study there each year, while a student from St. Andrews takes their place here at Sweetbriar. Foreign students from Denmark, France, Nassau, China, and Austria, along with their American friends, come to know and cherish such traditions as the Junior Bench and the Golden Stairs, most exclusively reserved for seniors only, where seniors have their pictures taken for the record. These lucky students are hearing about Daisy Williams, directly from Signora, who has lived at Sweetbriar for more than 50 years and before it was a college. She is telling them about Daisy, the little girl who died at the age of 16 years, but who will live forever, not just in these campus buildings, but in the lives of the thousands of women who have come here as students. As the daughters of some of these alumni, this group gets acquainted with the famous boxwood at Sweetbriar House, the plantation home where Daisy Williams grew up. Picturesque, eternal, yet constantly changing, the great trees at Sweetbriar have long been an inspiration, especially to art students who have tried to capture their majesty and the glorious vistas that change as each day moves from dawn to dusk. Trails lead to the mountain cabin and the many hours of fun and relaxation. A good place for learning is combined here with a good place to live. There are facilities for tennis and many other sports so that every student can develop the skills and attitudes that assure good health now and good use of recreational time after graduation. The lake is ideal for fun. Every girl must pass a swimming test before participating in water sports. Well known to Sweetbriar girls is the college infirmary, close at hand in the event of illness or mishap. Well-trained staff, good equipment, a modern approach to the matter of student and community health. Away from city noise, Sweetbriar's country campus has plenty of room for all college activities, all set against a background of matchless scenic beauty. Almost all faculty members and their families live right on the campus. Much incidental but valuable counseling is done, as in this instance where students visit Dean Pearl at her home. Many problems can be solved over a cup of tea, 
for each faculty home is often a gathering place for students. Many lifelong student-faculty friendships give enduring strength to the story of Sweetbriar's first 50 years. Prominent off-campus speakers representing various denominations are invited to preach at each Sunday morning worship service. Sunday at Sweetbriar is a day when the college is definitely a co-educational institution. On this particular Autumn Sunday, a Sweetbriar student had a chance to introduce her date to President Ann Gary Pannell, and in turn, her date was able to introduce them to the president of his college, who was the visiting minister that day. Religion is much more, however, than merely a Sunday matter at Sweetbriar. Amherst County Medical, Social and Educational Agencies give student teams a chance to render volunteer service. Care for those who need help has always been of importance in training Sweetbriar women for their later responsibilities as citizens and community leaders. Sweetbriar students keep in touch with industrial trends and come to understand the day-by-day -day affairs of the world of work and business. An economics class field trip group meets with a prominent industrial executive and hears him discuss the problems of modern business, industrial relations, and other matters of importance to our nation's economy. A safety engineer explains the precautions taken by a large foundry to emphasize safety. And the students try on various items of safety equipment. Plant safety procedures are seen as an example of American initiative and progress in the field of industrial production. Despite field trips and many other modern instructional aids, nothing takes the place of library research and self-directed study. The Mary Helen Cochran Library, a gift to the college in 1929, stands as evidence of the interest and generosity of one of Sweetbriar's major benefactors, the late Fergus Reed of Norfolk, Virginia. Study at Sweetbriar is study with a purpose, designed for maximum results, solid training in a liberal arts college. Full opportunity is available for those who are creative in literary fields. These girls are not only learning to write under expert instruction, they are being trained to recognize the standards of professional excellence necessary for actual publication of their work in off-campus magazines and other periodicals. There's lots of out-of-class learning, too. How to work together in a group, to administer a democratic form of student government, to carry forward, year after year, the honor system, which is an important part of life at Sweetbriar. The sign says theater, and it is a theater. The Paint and Patches Dramatic Club is known for excellent acting and stagecraft, despite the tiny makeshift stage and hall, which must now serve as Sweetbriar's theater. The time has come for us to work, to make our dream of an adequate auditorium and fine arts center a reality in brick and stone and steel, an achievement milestone for the celebration of our half-century anniversary. Again, here's the famous old landmark, Sweetbriar House. It has seen it all, almost 50 years of college history, from the first entering class to this group of students who are now working with President Pannell as members of the College Development Committee to strengthen the future of Sweetbriar. It's Founders Day, the day when the seniors first don their black robes, when the entire community makes a pilgrimage to the old family cemetery to pay respectful tribute to those who have made Sweetbriar possible. On this occasion, President Emeritus Mita Glass participates as one whose 20 years of devoted leadership represent a most important era of progress in the history of the college. Thus, the Sweetbriar of today takes time to honor the friends of yesterday. Another annual event never to be forgotten is the Christmas Carol Worship Service, where all Sweetbriar gathers to hear the music of the choir.
and to hear a Christmas message from a beloved member of the Sweetbriar community, churchman, teacher, friend. Before long, however, it's spring at Sweetbriar. And May Day, always colorful, gay, and appropriate amid blossoms and romantic pageantry. Each year a bit different, and yet always somewhat the same. An occasion symbolizing the beauty of both the landscape and the ideals that are part of this place. And before you know it, it's commencement time. What examples of Sweetbriar's spirit, the spirit of 56, are evident on all sides when parents gather for the big event. And seniors in their sophomore hooders practice the tricky business of being hooded so there'll be no slip up or hair must in the ceremony after the diplomas are awarded. On this solemn and yet happy occasion, faculty members often think back to other graduates, to earlier classes, to alumni who are now leading useful, purposeful lives in cities and towns across the country, both near and far. In our nation's capital, many Sweetbriar graduates hold important positions in government and other fields. Or they may think of one of their professional colleagues, and now a dean of women in a Tennessee university. Or one of the Sweetbriar graduates who are at the front line in the battle against disease and human suffering. Women who are now practicing as doctors of medicine. Or the recent graduate who is a research chemist in one of our great industrial plants, working as a scientist with other scientists who have done so much to improve our modern standards of living. The faculty think, too, of the thousands of American families, living proof that to educate a woman is to educate a family, homes that are one of our nation's greatest strengths, where the wife and mother is a Sweetbriar graduate. Yes, the alumni are likely to be in the thoughts of the faculty members. These graduates give sense and purpose to the spirit of 56. But commencement is not an end. It is a beginning. For the president and her staff, there's the matter of next year's budget. Repairs must be made. The plant must be cared for. There's the matter of planning for future development to secure seriously needed funds for buildings and endowment. In all this, a great number of other members of the Sweetbriar family are at work. The members of the College Development Committee, ably headed by Mrs. W. L. Lyons-Brown, meet on campus to work out plans. They study possible sites for new buildings. They organize their efforts for a systematic Sweetbriar College Development Program in cities, towns, and villages everywhere in the United States. Key planners in this great venture are the members of the Board of Overseers, busy people who travel great distances and devote much valuable time to the maintenance of the values which have enabled Sweetbriar to educate, quietly and without fanfare, the Sweetbriar women you and I know. I'd like you now to meet in person one of those overseers, an attorney and chairman of the executive committee of Capital Airlines, Mr. Charles H. Murkison of Washington, D.C. You have just seen a documentary of some of the things that make all of us members of the Sweetbriar family believe in this fine institution. We who believe must now be challenged. There's a task ahead for all of us. It's an exciting program of planned development that will guarantee for Sweetbriar another great half century of educational development. First, it is essential that we increase Sweetbriar's endowment by one and a quarter million dollars. Secondly, Sweetbriar's program of science education needs a new home. A new up-to-date science building is the only answer. Thirdly, a new dormitory will enable the college to increase our enrollment to 500. And that's a top enrollment figure not to be exceeded for Sweetbriar. This, by and large, as you readily see, 
is an improvement, not an expansion program. And finally, an auditorium and fine arts center, long awaited and much needed to fit the cultural needs of the community and to provide an adequate center for much of the life at Sweetbriar. That's a big program, a two and a half million dollar program. But with Sweetbriar alumni, parents, friends, all aware of these needs, with all of us working together, we'll have an inspiring progress report to make at the time of Sweetbriar's golden anniversary. As the father of two daughters, both Sweetbriar graduates, I know the alumni and I know Sweetbriar. We can therefore have faith, real faith, in the spirit of 56.